Well, hello, KG Racing fans. Uh, welcome to the next episode. Uh, we're going to do the body work today. Now, I've been putting this off. I've got kind of finishing anxiety. Um, I want everything to be perfect before it goes off to powder coat because powder coat is kind of expensive, and I don't want to grind any of that off to fix any anything I may have missed. So I come out here for hours and just stare at it, looking for something I missed to make sure it is absolutely perfect. It's just a matter of making tabs. I've got an inch and a quarter flat bar. And I'm just gonna make tabs to mount aluminum panels to. I've got these cool little rivet nuts, or rib nuts, whatever you call them. I'm going with M8. So I've got a bunch of M8 bolts to go with it. And I've got a four by eight foot sheet of aluminum. That was 122 bucks. So I am nervous to cut that up to say the least because I don't have to buy another piece <laughs> so it's just uh, it's time to get on with it now main considerations for mounting your body panels is protection uh, now obviously it's going to keep the dust out of the cabin but we've got stuff hanging out here that we don't want to get snagged on any any tree branches or roots or stumps or anything so we're going to make these body panels in a manner that uh, protects everything. So I'm just going to use the cardboard box that the seat came in because it's nice and big. Um, I've been going back and forth on whether I'm going, whether I was going to do a one big long sheet and cover the whole side, or if I was going to break it up into individual panels. Now, since I'm having this powder coated, a pretty color, I kind of want to show that off. So I'm going to do the individual panels and let the the chassis shine through may look good, it may not. There's all kinds of creative people out there building these that can do way better body work than I can. Uh, some people can probably even fiberglass. Uh, there's a guy that can actually shape metal and he's making amazing body work so far. So let's get to work. Let's get started, let's get this finished up. As you can see, it's nice outside. The garage door is open. This needs to be done so we can start playing. Let's get to it. All right, so we've got all the cardboard templates. Um, I kind of look like the look of the, the split panels, and I think we managed to get a little bit of style in there. Let's get that aluminum cut. All right, something you'll want to take into consideration when you're cutting your templates out is making the most of your giant piece of aluminum. So I laid it out, so our hood piece is here, and if I flip this to the other side, I can make two full sides, and you will save yourself a couple bucks. So uh, I got half the body work on. Uh, I didn't film that a whole lot because I was still kind of figuring out the best method possible. Two things I wanted to do was 
since I'm mounting these and making mounting points on the body, I might as well gusset some of the corners. So most of the body mounts are at a junction of tubes to kind of be a pseudo gusset. Is it gonna do a lot? Who knows? It's gonna do something. So I wanted to learn about this before I tried to pass it on to you. Um, what I have here is I have two millimeter aluminum panels. Uh, I use two millimeters for the floorboard per the regs. Now, since I'm in the US, two mil is expensive if you can find it. So I'm using 0.079 rounded up and it's either 0 0.080 or 0 0.090 or the closest two millimeters I can find. Um, but I also got some one millimeter to use um, for the body panels. Now I know I wanted to do the hood and the driver's panels in two mil to just to add some, uh, some protection. Um, but some of the curvier parts, I was gonna use uh, one millimeter. Now, first I tried to do the whole thing in two mil because I bought a giant four foot by eight foot sheet for like 122 bucks. And I figured if I could do the whole body for 122 bucks in aluminum, I was doing pretty all right. And then I got to this fella here. <laughs> uh, it's not too aggressive, but it was aggressive enough to make me uh, leave out on the two millimeter and go with the one millimeter, which is fine. Uh, both have their advantages and disadvantages. The two mil is sturdy. It's very, very sturdy. So you need to make less mounts for it because it can hold itself in place. Um, the one mil is bendable, but still sturdy. You just have to put it in with more mounts which explains why this piece has uh, five mounts in it and the other ones have minimal. So I'll spend the other half walking you through how I lined up the mounts. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take everything from the left side and just copy it. It may not line up perfectly, so I might have a really good side and then an almost really good side. But So something I decided after making up the templates and starting to mount all of this was that I wanted this to be in two pieces so I didn't have to remove the front A-arms to get the body panels off. I wanted to be able to assemble it and then put the body panels on. And the best way to do that was to just cut this sucker right in half. All right, so now once all the panels are cut, we can start fitting them in. Uh, advice I can give you off the bat. Uh, at least measure the other side. Um, this cross member up here is not in the exact same place as the other side. Uh, it's about an eighth to a quarter inch. Uh, this is mounted taller, so this panel looks like it's going to be an eighth to a quarter inch too short for the same alignment as the other side, which tweaks me really, really badly. So I should have measured it. I should have put in the time instead of just hoping it would fit, hoping that I made this completely square. So it looks like this is gonna fit up pretty well with minimal trimming. So now comes the fun part of making all the tabs to get this in place. Lucky for me, I've got a whole bunch of tabs that were not correct. So I had to cut them off and cut them out. So I've got a whole stack of these already pre-cut, pre-drilled, uh, it's just one more step on the stepper bit to get one of those rivet nuts in here. So that's pretty lucky for me, but I've been building these for a long time. So I have a lot of, a lot of scrap in the bin. <laughs> All right, so we'll start with this big plate. See, I, I just wanted this to come about another eighth of an inch to help seal the cockpit a little better. Now we do have some, some wiggle room, not a lot. And as long as it looks good on its own, like this sitting a little lower on this side than it does that side, then it's gonna look good. And it's gonna be hard to tell that it doesn't match the other side. It's tough, time consuming, but it'll be worth it when you get it right because it's gonna look so good.
All right, so this is the hard and frustrating part. How to get the tabs in good alignment with the body panel you're putting on without melting the aluminum with your welder and not having to be all crooked so your bolt cross threads. It sucks. It sucks so badly. Now for this big panel, we have plenty of access coming in from this way. So we can just cut this piece to be a gusset for this corner and then we can tack it in from this side. All right, so we've got our rivet nut in. It's still just tacked. Um, I've got a hole drilled. Now what I did to mark that was I just came in from the other side and scribed it with a small screwdriver. Get it started. Now what's tough about these rivet nuts is they're easy to cross thread. So I ended up buying longer bolts just to get the alignment right. And then once the alignment's right on the tabs, you can use go switch to the smaller ones. So now the rest of it's just lined up. That's being held in place where we set it. And now if we just throw one clamp on, it's perfectly set up for the rest of our tabs. So we can go ahead and just make all the rest of the tabs that easy. All right, so here's the nifty little trick I learned from doing the other side. It's really hard to get in here and get this positioned and packed in place from the inside because there's no room. It's too tight in here to get it in place and you end up making big, giant, nasty welds and it just doesn't look pretty. So once you get your piece fitted up, Once you know it's going to fit well, pull the clamps off. And what we're going to do is going to take a magnet, pop it across that gap. That'll hold it in place till you get some some tacks on there. Get it lined up with the angle that you're going to have your piece and get it tacked in and it'll be nice and flush and straight and smooth and you won't have any trouble getting your bolts in. And you just do that for all the different places you're gonna put your mounts. Pretty slick. All right, so we've got all our tabs tacked in. We've got our rib nuts in. Now it's just time to clamp in this piece and mark the back sides of our rivet nuts by scoring it that little screwdriver. Now this is the one millimeter, so that's why I'm kind of forming it to the shape I want to make that smooth transition from the front end to the cockpit. It's gonna look really, really slick. And it's really just gonna add to the overall look of this cross cart rather than having hard lines. I mean, this is round tubing, got square tubing. So I wanted to contour this panel to reflect that work. And don't get it wrong, this is art. This is metal art. So whatever fits your artistic eye is what you can do to yours. Pretty slick, in my opinion. Let's see if I can use every single clamp I own. Now for this one in particular, it's important that you get it exactly where you want it because of that curve. It's gonna, it could throw some of your lines off for your holes. If you, dig, if you drill your holes out um, with it not in its bent location, they're not gonna line up when you go to put them on there. There we go. It's got a nice curve to it. Matches the other side. 
That went way better than the first time I did this. Now I'll just quickly talk about the hood here. Um, the hood is super easy and super straightforward. You just cut the piece to match. And then I just used a flat bar, made sure it was level and straight across and picked a couple points to weld on the upper and lower rivet nuts. Uh, I was gonna put a fifth one here, but with that two mil, you really don't need it. If these panels start vibrating, I'm gonna put some weather stripping uh, where they all ride so it'll quiet it down, um, maybe across here, but it's that easy. So just tabs, rivet nuts, line them up, make them even. All right, so this is where I figured out. So I just did a piece of eighth inch flat bar pieces out we've got this piece ready to mount and as you can see we don't have to take the whole thing the front a arms apart to put this piece in which is a total win now something else i did was i just took some three inch flat bar steel and just cornered off this front now i'm going to add some weld here clean this up probably grind it down so it's kind of just a smooth shape so Back to this, we've got this piece mounted where we want it. All right, now we just have one piece left. Um, I set this up so that you didn't have to take off the front A arms to mount it, but you do have to undo the shock, just the, the nature of how tight it is. But we're not gonna let that bother us any, are we? So this one, oh man, that fits so nice. So nice. So this one's gonna get a little bit of a bend. So I'm just gonna mark it. I'm gonna mark it where I want the bends to be and I'm gonna put it in a bench vise. All right, there we go, front end's done. It's removable with just having to remove the shock. Uh, I made sure it, there was clearance for the light bar to come on and off, and it matches the other side pretty well. I'll let you be the judge of that. Yeah, a little trimming. I did not trim that up. Needs a little trimming, just to set that gap. But otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. All right, so this last piece gets a bend. Um, it doesn't have to get a bend, but to get rid of this gap, you have to put a bend in it. Now, all I've done was mark where the uh, engine support slash cost bars go and the bend in the bottom tubing, the bottom floor plan pan. I'm just gonna bend it there. And I'm gonna bend it so it goes around this corner and it's gonna be somewhat of a crease, but it's gonna make this sit nice and flush and it's gonna line that up with the back of the buggy. Well, there it is, uh, all the protective plastics taken off. So in the test run video, I broke the wing. I broke the tabs that hold the wing to the mounts. These mounts turned out to be super flimsy and just didn't work at all. I mean, they worked, but they needed to be stiffer. They needed to be either thicker aluminum or a different hardness. So I had to find replacement tabs and I did find replacement tabs and they came with mounts, taller mounts. These are 10 inch mounts and they come with the, the standard crappy adjustable bits that come off of there. So this is going to be an adjustable wing and I'm not going to have my own custom fab mounts, which hurts my feelings, but we're going to make it work. So first let's swap out the broken hardware and then we'll see about where we're gonna mount these. So when removing the mounts, I discovered that it may not have been my mounts that were the problem. Um, you can see all the, these marks in here. These screws or bolts or whatever are, looks like they're about a millimeter too long and we're not seating it correctly on the wing. So we're, gonna, we're still gonna swap it. Good insurance, good guarantee that it's gonna work. Wow, that worked out surprisingly well. Just uh, 
use a whole bunch of clamps. I actually like this angle. I like it hanging off the back. Um, and racing the further back you go, the more downforce, the longer moment from your center of gravity you get, which is the more downforce you get. So it being back actually kind of kind of tickles me a bit. But I'm at maximum adjustment for the angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull these in, dip the front sides to the bottom side of this for the mouse, and then the top side of the back, and that's gonna give me uh, a few degrees to work with. This should only take a, a few minutes. All right, so I've got these mounted up. What, is that? what I did was I just took the feet off because we don't really have a flat surface to mount this to. It's going on a round piece of tubing. So I made the back one tall, the front one short, and these are 17 inches apart to match the tubing on the frame. So we'll just set it in place, uh, eyeball it, measure it, do whatever we can to make it as straight as possible. All right, so I've got my mounts in place where I want them. Uh, they are not completely tight in case I need to make any last minute adjustments. I'm just gonna tack the one side in, I'll match the other side, and tack that in, and see where we are. All right, so now that it's on, uh, now it's tacked in place, take your level and see how you stand. And we are within 300th of a degree off. There you have it. We've got aluminum body panels. Um, we've got our wing redone. It's nice and solid now. Super solid now and adjustable, which isn't too bad. Now the last thing I'm gonna do, and I'm not gonna do it on camera, um, but I'm gonna put provisions on here to add ducts or body panels or number plates or whatever. I really don't like anything to be here because from the driver's seat, you can still look through right here. So I'm not a big fan of having these on here, but if we run into uh, situations where it's getting hot or uh, it's required for any certain reasons, I wanna have the provisions there. Um, they won't look too bad, I'll just have them right tucked in the corners. So that's it. Uh, there's still more to do, but it's gonna have to wait for another episode. Thanks for watching, I hope you are enjoying this. Uh, all the people out there building, you guys are doing an incredible job. I love the pictures. Your work is so cool. Um, the things you're coming up with that's different from me inspires me. So stay tuned. Um, as soon as we get this done, there's gonna be a big surprise. Um, I'm really excited about it. I wanna get these done so I can share it with you guys. I think you're gonna like it. Anyway, thanks for watching.